Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Jason back at it again with another Geography Now video. I just want to say thank you guys for the support in the last video. If you guys do enjoy these, subscribe. Alright, subscribe and like. All right, that's how I know that you guys like this stuff. So, today we're going to be reacting to Geography Now, South Africa, finally. So, what I know about South Africa, you know, they used to own the Nibia, which is used to be called like South Africa. West Africa, West Africa, and I also know the apartheid with Nelson Mandela. That's all I know. Let's just hurry up because this video is like 33 minutes, which is like the new longest video, I'm pretty sure. So, anyways, guys, we'll get this reaction started in three, two, one, go. And just the words. It's literally just all cues. I like the new setup though. Everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Once again, this shirt was made by geography Ruba from UnityShirtShop.com. She makes these cool handmade African flag logo shirts. It's looking pretty sick. Specifically made this one with the Geography Now logo in the back for me. Oh, thank I you. like oh, it. Forget, you can also get Geography Now merchandise at GeographyNow.com. Just a heads up. Anyway, South Africa. This is a big one. South Africa is kind of a big deal in Africa in general. And you know what else is a big deal? Having an actual South African in the episode. Say hi to Catherine from South Africa. Come on in. Yes, I know the flag is upside down. Come on, Barb's. Come on. Don't disrespect the South African flag. But did it change the music? I swear they changed the music. I, I like it though. But I still miss the old one. lies at the bottom of the continent of Africa by coastal between the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. In fact, the southernmost point of the African continental mainland, Cape Agulhas, has a cool spot you can check out with a plaque and a giant Africa map monument. Bruh. There, they are bordered by Bruh. six other countries. Bruh. Don't forget little Eswatini and the entirely enclaved country of Lesotho. From there, the country is divided into nine provinces. The country doesn't have one official capital, but rather three. Pretoria, which holds the executive branch, including the home of the president, okay, okay, okay. as well as most of the embassies for international diplomats. The legislature legislative branch is held in Cape Town, where you can find the National Parliament and second largest city in the country, and Bloemfontein, near the center of the country, hosts the All judicial right. branch and Cape the Supreme Town. Court of Appeal. Some say technically Johannesburg could also be considered maybe a fourth capital because it has the constitutional court, and the city has a huge level of significance as the largest and busiest city of the country. Just but choose one, inside, guys. Come on, Mike. Also hosts the biggest and busiest airport in South Africa. You know what? Why choose one if you can have four, yes. In the second and third largest cities, Cape Town and Durban's Cape Shaka International. The country has a wide network Heard of tone isn't and the, the most well-developed rail system in all of Africa. Johannesburg being the main central hub that spiderwebs all the other main lines that stretch into every other province and abroad into neighboring countries. South Africa also boasts incredible seafaring infrastructure with the second busiest container port in all of Africa after Port Said in Egypt. The port of Durban, which provides 60% of all South Africa's shipping revenue. Finally, South Africa's Brilliant. island or insular region are mostly confined to small patches along the coasts like the Port Elizabeth Bay or Robin Island just north of Cape Town, famous for being the spot where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. However, if we include the entire domain belonging to South Africa, then Prince Edward and Marion Island, which belong to the Western Cape Province, are the actual course, southernmost points of the, the African continent. British These islands are mostly uninhabited, with the exception of a meteorological and station and bunkers for scientists. The most British yeah, names. the southernmost point on Marion Island is called Cape Hooker. Literally, it is. So, okay, you're probably wondering... Be quiet, Barbs. Well, yes. long story short, it was kind of like... UK! Okay, if you help me kick his ass, I'll be one of your protectorates. You got a deal. <laughs> I got him. Woo! Hey, your king died, and we want to make you a part of the Cape Colony. Oh, no, I'll just stick with protectorate. Well, we don't like that. Okay, well, I guess that means we'll spend the next 14 years resisting and giving you a headache. Deal. Mm. We give up. We'll give you guys self-rule as a separate crown colony. You guys suck, but whatever. It's better than being part of the Cape Colony. South Africa is now going to become its own country, and we want you to be in it. Oh, hell no. Oh, come on. We're going to have very tense and racially divided it's all right. apartheid policies. Don't waste your time on your people. Okay, him. how do you see that uh, less, conducive to the benefit less of my people? Less of though. Less of though. Wherever you pronounce it. Enjoy your you have Nibia. And from there, it pretty much sealed the deal that Lesotho would never join South Africa. Anyway, oh, Lesotho. Interesting thing. Forget about Lesotho. You have the Nibia or Nibia. 
recognizes the certain indigenous monarchs. Yeah, today there are about 13 monarchs from nine different ethno-linguistic groups and tons of other smaller paramounts and high chiefs in South Africa. Although they do not have direct legislative power to the republic, they have a high degree of regional influence and involvement in communal affairs. Sadly, shortly before filming this episode, Zulu King Goodwill's Lelikini passed away. He ruled for five decades and had a huge role of significance in the Zulu community. Wow, he was a king. A king. Well, in any case, let's talk about some of the top notable five spots. Five decades, so. South African influencer and travel writer Gofari do it for us. Gofari, take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Gofari, a South African travel blogger, and I'm going to talk you through the notable sites to visit in South Africa. So I'm going to talk through the cultural and the man-made sites. We have Blokrans Bridge, which is the highest bridge bungee in the world. We also have oh, okay. many theme parks. I thought it was like city, highest bridge, and I'm like, and I thought it was like uh, uh, the bridge Tower, in France. I forgot its museum, name. The God. world's largest. Pineapple, the big hole, Spongebob. Orlando Towers, Boa Spongebob Bab, was in real life. We have There's many UNESCO World like Heritage Sites, such as Mapungubwe and also Robben Island, which is where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. Thank you. Thanks, Gofari. You are awesome. Check out her Instagram and pages in the links in the description below. So yeah, South Africa's natural wonders, you won't even know where to begin with. Like, they have the largest cave system in Africa, the Congo Cave, four plus potholes, the tallest... Why is it called the Congo Cave? It's not in Congo. Whoa, whoa, hold your horses, Catherine. That's the nature stuff. You're going to... That's... We're going to talk about that in the next segment. We'll, we'll, uh, uh, the next segment, which is... So, South Africa... Right. you got it, Barbs. Well, when the country it was a good segment in into it. In the wilderness don't even require medication. They even have their own unique biome called Steinbosch, the smallest and the richest of the six floral kingdom in the world, only found in southern Africa with over 6,000 endemic plant species, including the national flower, which is the pink trochia. Mm. When I think of South Africa, that's what I Bruh. think in my mind, always. Specifically Steinbosch. Specifically Steinbosch, yes. Mm. It's also home to the rooibos plant where rooibos tea comes from. That's my favorite tea. Mm. Some tea. And yes. I love some tea. Right. Overall, you literally can't find anywhere that looks like South Africa. For one, the country is unlike any other nation in that it's not only the southernmost portion of the East African Rift, but the entire country is kind of split between a semicircle mountain range known as the Great Escarpment. It feeds into the tallest range, the Drakensberg Mountains, in the east where you can find the tallest peak, Mapadi, shared with Lesotho. These mountains are also the source of the longest river in the country, the Orange River, which ends in the Atlantic Ocean. South Africa doesn't have many large natural lakes, and the majority of inland bodies of water are man-made reservoirs, the largest one being the Harip Dam, located in the center of the country. The largest natural freshwater lake, though, is speculated to be Sibai, part of KwaZulu-Natal's Greater St. Lucia Wetland Park on the east coast, a UNESCO heritage site. If you zoom out a little bit, you'll notice the Great Escarpment has these sharp, narrow, parallel wrinkles at the bottom. These are called the Cape Mountains, which are essentially mm. leftover sediments smashed by contrasting tectonic activity long ago when South Africa was connected to Argentina and Antarctica in the Gondwana supercontinent. Oh, come on, bro. We need Pangea back. I miss Pangea. The Land, Bushman Land, and Kalamari, which are dry, arid, rocky areas, sparsely populated and loaded with rich flora of succulent plants and minerals. There's that ox. Move more east oh, and north of the escarpment, mm, you have the know. eastern midlands, KwaZulu-Natal coast, sweeping up to the Lowveld and the Limpopo Lowveld in the north. That's These are the most names. lush and green areas of Kwazulu. South Africa and hold much of the arable land as well as nature and forest preserves. When you move inland, though, you get the high velds, the bush veld, and Hrika land west, which are the arid savannas of South Africa. This is probably one of the most unique areas of South Africa because it is the site where two things happened. One, an enormous meteor hit this spot, creating the largest verified impact crater on Earth, known as the Fredford Crater, standing over 300 kilometers wide. You can even see the dome from space at the town of Fredford. And two, said meteor was supposedly the source of many minerals like gold and platinum that fed the land, which later the inhabitants would subsequently discover and go crazy after in a mad gold rush and mining rush. Now, although South mm. Africa is the second largest economy in Africa after Nigeria, it is ranked the most industrialized, technologically advanced, and economically diversified. And although the country does have a wide income gap between the wealthy and poor, the middle class has been growing every year since the 90s. Today, South Africa is one of the world's top platinum and chromium producer. They consistently rank in the top 10 producers of gold and diamonds as well. And finally, the gold rush in Witwatersrand in 1886 pretty much established Bro, why is all the powerhouse. gold so rushes gotta have to have no well, I messed up. Why do all the gold rushes have to happen in the 1800s? So we got the Alaskan gold rush, 1890 something. 
And then you got the gold rush in the 1840s. And you got that with 1880s. Sadly, though, South Africa does have the highest population of people infected with HIV at over 7.5 million and fourth in the world per population this year. There's even a character on their version of Sesame Street who has HIV to help kids born with AIDS to cope. And finally, the country has a huge tourism industry, mostly in the nature areas. Speaking of nature, it's time for Gary Harlow to explain. Gary Harlow. Let's go. National Geographic certified. 20 national parks and dozens of nature reserves. The most famous and visited ones being the Table Mountain. I swear, I'm, I'm so dumb. I thought those were like disputed lands. South Africa is ranked the sixth out of the 17 classified mega diverse countries in the world. Tenth for plant species and third for marine endemism. In fact, yeah, let's go South Africa. I see you. Billions of sardines spawn in the cool waters of the Agulhas like Bay, fish, creating yeah. a feeding frenzy for all the ocean predators. Look at them go, chomping. John. <laughs> and there's over 850 Bruh. bird species, including the national bird, the blue crane. But more interesting, South Africa and Namibia are the only two countries in Africa that host penguins. The endangered African Wait, there's penguins? Cape penguin is unique in that it has pink glands. It's gotta be in like the way southern. Since South Africa is generally but actually, warmer, never mind. He's in Namibia. Like, you know, Antarctica. So, uh, there's nearly 300 mammal species. Species inhabiting the wilderness, including the national Bro, animals, South Africa the There's thing. even an entire national park dedicated to elephants in the south. And finally, South Africa is not only home to many animals, but also extinct animal fossils. The Karoo region has more dinosaur fossil sites than any other place in the country, and numerous dinos have been excavated. <coughs> and speaking of dinos, <laughs> I got a velocity. Wrap this up. Thank you, Gary. Man, what a Chad. What an absolute legend. Oh, no. Oh, this is Noah. But I'm, I'm kind of upset that Barb's didn't say espresso break time, something like that. So, come on, bro. Bunny chow, cooked sister, malva pudding, quickie coat, fat cakes, mopani worms, savory pies. Oh man, that curry, ruined it. The worms curry, ruined it. Tom. It was so good. And then I saw the worms. It just, it just all disappeared. World, starting all the way back to 1659. And supposedly Route 62 is Probably the longest the wine route in the world. That's the Europeans. Kilometers long. And of course, many might argue the national dish would be braai, or South African style barbecue. Cooked over I'm, I'm sorry, eggs. Europeans. If oh, you're, if Noah, you're a European. Cool. Thanks, Noah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for talking smack, okay? I'm taking AP Euro next year, so please, I'm doing you guys a favor. Burger Mondays. Speaking of the people of South Africa, I think that means we should probably move on to the next segment. Demographics. Man. Now I asked you guys, the South African geography peeps, what it means to be South African. And here are some things you guys said. Being South African is very nice because we have so many different types of uh, traditional groups where everyone is celebrating. We come from a beautiful country. We're full of cultural diversity. And of course, we truly epitomize the rainbow nation. To be South African means to live in the most beautiful country in the world and to be part of the most vibrant and energetic group of people. We're quite resilient when it comes to the challenges we face as well we have got a strong strong sense of pride living in a post-apartheid era um, i feel that we have a lot of unity we have a lot of strength and we are really heroes for the challenges that we face every week and that we overcome and we always find a way to remain in the game and strong it's an absolute miracle yeah let's go 19 rugby world cup in japan and seeing how diverse and incredible man the rugby uh, south african um, you know, rugby were. It's, it's fun sometimes. It's evolving, right, I don't, so many different I don't watch it sometimes. Interesting things going on. It's an incredible thing. I am especially appreciative of the fact that I don't have to travel far to experience something different. Each of its nine provinces are so unique in their landscapes, in their cultures, in their flavors. So it's that. That's what makes it such a fun and exciting place to be. Thank you, guys. What about you, Catherine? Well, I would say that every weekend is a Joel. Joel? What was that? Joel. What is that? So if you're going to go for a Joel, you're going to go for a party, and it's going to be, like, a really insane night. Like, you're, if you're going to go Joel, you're going to go, like, really hard that night. 
Ooh, okay. Now, as you will find out, South Africa is very diverse in terms of ethnic linguistic people groups. Let's start with the pie chart, shall we? The country has about 60 million people and has the largest white he and says Asian it's diverse, populations and diverse. percentages per population. So in let's all see of how Africa. many. The country is made up predominantly of black Africans at about 80 percent. Oh, it doesn't look diverse. Of this 80 percent, there are many groups. Zulus and Xhosa are the largest ones at about 23 percent and 16 percent, followed by the Northern Sutu and Swana at okay, about 9 percent and 8 percent. And from me there, wrong. there's a bunch of other groups. Oh, man, we'll the talk about them later in this episode. Cut. For the remaining 20 percent of the population, the white South Africans and coloreds have almost identical populations at somewhere around 9% each. Keep in mind though, amongst the white population, about 60% of them are Afrikaners and 35% are English, the remaining 5 or so percent being other Europeans. The rest of the population is mostly made up of Asians like Indians, Malays, Chinese, and so on. So they use the South African Rand as their currency and they also use the M plug outlet and they also drive on the left side of the road. Left, former British car. Mm -hmm. And also, somewhere around Come on, guys, why drive in the left? Drive on the right. So, life. So heard actually, word, I think I'm just used to driving. The Americans the right. might have some horrible pre civil rights flashbacks when we hear that word, but I assure you, it's totally safe to use here in South Africa, right? Yeah. It is totally safe, and I actually did use that word a few times in America, and I didn't know what I was doing until one of my friends that was American, he actually pulled me aside and he was like, No. <laughs> now, there's no complete definitive genetic makeup requirement, but colored people are essentially people that are mixed mostly between blacks and whites, although you can also have some Asians in there as well. It's not uncommon. Basically, yes. After all the mixing, they kind of just made a new race. Sarah Tishkoff, a geneticist at the University of Pennsylvania, did a genetic study that concluded that the Cape Colors of South Africa have the highest levels of mixed ancestry in the world. So yeah, they're literally the children of the earth. And that other word, Afrikaner, what is that? So long story short, they're descended from the people brought in by the Dutch settlers. No, the not the Dutch. Only about 40% of Afrikaners are directly Dutch descended, and the rest were mostly German and French. Dutch and Afrikaans are about 90 to 95% mutually intelligible. <laughs> South Africa has about 35 indigenous languages, but 11 official languages. Anyway, these 11 languages are divided into five families. And of the languages, English is the preferred language of the intercommunication between all peoples. And most South Africans are fluent in at least two or three languages. You with English and Afrikaans, right? Yes. Yeah. Is it kind of like really appreciated when a black South African sees a white South African speaking their language? Yeah. Oh, it absolutely is. And that's something that I have now mastered. We are taught Kosa in school, for example. It, it, it isn't to the degree that Afrikaans is, is taught. You don't really become fluent, like I can understand certain things, but not a lot. Yeah, I think uh, Port Elizabeth was changed to Paipela yes, or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. You said that good. Man. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. And yes, many of the Muni languages like Zulu and Xhosa have the click sound. And mm -hmm. These clicks were actually borrowed though. See, of the black Africans who uh, to our Bantu, believe it or not, they are not the original inhabitants of South Africa. Archaeological Namibia? evidence suggests that they migrated somewhere estimated around the 3rd century AD. The Khoi Khoi and San people, often collectively called the Khoi San, make up less than 1% of the population today, and they are the earliest known inhabitants with ancestors dating back somewhere around 100 to 200,000 years. Go guys, I'm getting tired. Some of the oldest peoples on oh Earth. God. They have the original click languages. Quick history lesson. Over time, the Bantu Ooh, it's called history. With their iron tools and Yo, barbs. And Hit me out with the, the AP stuff. And sociologists it had AP that there must have been some intermingling because the click consonants were adopted in their languages. Over a millennium later, the Dutch were first Europeans to come in and establish Cape Town and then brought in their founders named the Zulus. Meanwhile, hundreds of miles then east, came the British and, and just, just took, took all the land. The early 19th century and drove out many of the rival tribes like the Matabele, Makololo, and the Fengu. This was known as the Mpetene or the great crushing and displacement into the british this is where the story gets really complicated here comes so the british god the save the queen over here i'm taking cape town while the netherlands has problems in europe well i'm just gonna go run away then and make my own republics in the north <laughs> Out. You're not even from this continent. Make me. Oh, I'll make you. Oh, <laughs> hey, get the bollocks. There's like a ton of gold and diamonds in your new republic areas. Move over. Hell no. Yeah, there's a lot Man. more that goes into that, but basically it was a chain of weird multi leveled, multi party, multi ethnic battles and subjugation. Man, welcome to the, the, the Berlin Conference and European colonization. So you had one Come on, Europeans. European you guys European had to like I'm separate ethnics. Look what that caused. I want the land. 
I was here centuries before you. I was here over a millennium before you. Seriously, are we really doing this? In any case, after the country gained independence in 1910 as a union and fully sovereign in 1931, it underwent a controversial period of apartheid. Wait, got apartheid in 1948, all the way Man. to Maybe I'm just so used to like the African movement in the 40s and I just forgot about South Africa getting independence in 1910. I thought it gained independence in the 40s. Under the homeland system, most of the black population was concentrated in the ethno-states called Bantu stands, where only 13% of the land was reserved for the majority of the black populace to have property in. Rules and services were different for colored people as well, like, and the Asian minorities. It was very complicated and uh, often arbitrarily drawn. Some of the colored people were allowed in Parliament in the 70s and some weren't. Some minorities were labeled in the same group as coloreds, while some, like the Lebanese, Taiwanese, Koreans, Japanese, they all shared actually the same classification level for whites. It was confusing and weird, yeah. Eventually, Jeez. after a number of factors pressured well, them, the South Africa in the 1960s. Blacks in 1994, and that's when and then here comes Mouse, the Nelson Mandela. The of power like that usually goes one of two ways. One, a spiteful uprising from the native black population built on vengeance that seeks to dispose most of the white population and expropriate everything from them or number two find a way to move forward as one people with a new system built on forgiveness acknowledging that it will let's be awkward and this, difficult but let's go with the second option Today, of course, it's still second very option seems a little tight it's awkward it's, it's, it's not violent so Crime is still high in certain areas due to social stress and poverty. And yes, there's the whole BEE movement thing, which started as a program aimed to integrate the black population into the workforce, but it has a lot of controversial undertones and with implementation. I'm sure you could probably say a lot of stuff about that, yes. you and the other South Africans. Then there's the energy crisis or load shedding issue. You'll actually wake up in the morning and you'll get a message on your phone because you have an app that will tell you it's from 6 a.m. to maybe like 2 p.m. You won't have any energy at all. At least they have an app that warns you. So. Well, that's new. That's new. We didn't always have that. Oh. oh. They're working on it. <laughs> yeah. mm. but the point is, there's I feel so bad for the people who like the had to deal okay. with you the power outage with before the app. Almost impossible. But I don't know. Watch the movie Invictus if you want to get an idea on how it started. Oh, and uh, speaking of Invictus, let's move on to a lighter note. Let's talk about the sports. Here's Art with the sports part. Yeah. Hey Art, hey let's go. Art. Hey guys, it's me and Tarchin. We're back. All right, I gotta put Tarchin down so we can start. Oh, Specifically man. rugby. Their national team, the Springboks, have won the World Cup three times, tied with New Zealand. In fact, South Africa is one of only two countries that has hosted the soccer, rugby, and cricket World Cups. In fact, they are actually the only African country to host the soccer World Cup so far. Fun fact, South Africans are actually one of the only countries that, like us Americans, also call football soccer cheers to you guys soccer makes no sense but we're together in her wrong no otherwise cricket is probably i refuse to call it soccer and their national team the proteus usually ranks in the world's top 10 best teams otherwise at the olympics they've done pretty well in the swimming and athletics department racking up 26 gold medals so far gold is better than silver they've also been tennis powerhouses yeah, lion. johan creek won two australian grand slam titles in the 80s that's a big deal in certain areas you might find a touch of dutch with things like cork ball also originating in south africa is ring ball which is basically another variation of cork ball <laughs> Yufske is a traditional Afrikaner sport similar to horseshoes in which you have to knock over a peg on the ground from a distance. And many of the native peoples have their own style of martial arts. The most renowned probably being the Nuni stick fighting or Donga, performed mostly by the Zulu or the Onk. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> the clicking though is just so satisfying. And that's it for me. I'm gonna get the out of here. I'll see ya. Thank you, Art. And South Africa is also really well known for its surfing. And if you ever just want to watch a competition and have a great dole, you can go Joel. to Jay Bay. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that That's what again. it would happen. So, as we mentioned, South Africa has a huge diversity of ethnic linguistic people groups. We already made a video explaining about some of them, but let's just quickly cover the main ones. First, you have the Nguni group. This group includes the cousins Zulus, Xhosas, and the Ndebele peoples. Zulus are probably the most well known worldwide. You may have seen images of their traditional animal skin warrior attire, or weaponry, and dance ceremonies for the men. Women My man, over there, vibe, and let's go. Solo hats on special occasions. 
for the Xhosa, they are kind of like the pacifist ziv siblings of the Zulus. Their traditional garbs have those black and white patterns with beads and red ochre dyed blanket coverings. And the Bere are like the artists, known for their colorful patterns, painted houses, the symbols are unique to each family. And they are also the bead experts, and they will form heavy beaded necks and leg ornaments on special occasions. Finally, the Swazi Looks people so are interesting. basically cousins to the Bere of the Swatini, uh, known for Swatini. honoring things with Mflanga or V. Uh, they are all relatives to the people of Lesotho and Botswana, and many of them are mountain people. You can see lots of them riding horses and wearing Mokorotlo hats and Basutu blankets. The temperatures are generally colder with high. Oh, so that's where the Basutu flag. And they love the color blue, like especially in the middle of the flag, for example. The Songa are known for their many, many initiation rituals and electric dance style or Songa disco. The Venda people are some of the most isolated groups in the north, famous for their natural medicines and the masangwe or bare knuckle fist fight sport which people use to kind of like monitor and solve disputes Jesus. Now non-Africans we already explained about the white South Africans the Afrikaners and the English are unique in the way that they kind of develop their own breakaway Africanized culture from the European ancestors what are you by the way I'm English oh okay I am <laughs> an English through and through the colored community has always kind of had a unique status as the somewhat marginalized but not as marginalized group they've always kind of had to figure out who they were since they technically didn't fully belong anywhere. It's, yeah. Then you have the Asian community. The largest group being in the Cape Malays and the Indians, fought over during colonial times till their indentured servitude. The Boer Park neighborhood of Cape Town is essentially right, the Malay quarter, and today their culture yeah. is a fascinating mixture that blends elements of Dutch and Asian. That's fact, that's interesting, interesting though. Their first language and the it's like an old the Asian culture in South Britain, Africa. And Durban has one of the highest population of Indians outside of India. Most were brought over from West and South India, including Gandhi, who spent oh his my time God. living in the area. Whew, yeah, that was a lot. Just that was turned off by itself. Because there's so many other people groups we didn't even talk about. But in any case, here's Hannah to explain a little bit more about the few things that South Africa's people have collectively as one entity. One entity. <laughs> entity. <laughs> you get the point. Hannah's culture segment. Random Hannah. Random Hannah. Woo, let's go. Africa. Guys, get a random Hannah shirt at theogasymaha.com. So, okay. all right. He didn't throw shade on my guy. Keith. Alright, don't do it. Because Keith, he's a nice guy. I love Keith. For one, many of the native ethnic groups, whether Zulu or Benda, follow the Labola system, in which the groom must pay a dowry in cattle to the bride's family. I love the countries where they pay people in cows. Remember Rwanda? Yes, I freaked out. I was like, what? There is literally a Labolo app available. No, why? It's interesting, but at the same time. It was sort this of a weird. social commentary movement that depicted the impoverished black communities of South Africa to move towards like the, the art. apartheid. Beautiful in addition, art. I like you it. notice there are so many different architecture styles in South Africa. You have everything Igloos, from the bro. narrow thatched, fortified dome huts of Zulu to the Dutch style homes. I don't know why. Inspired from the Dutch with flat, post-sex oh. gable roofs. Norman. South Africans have also been front runners in many inventions, discoveries, and innovations. For example, the automatic pool cleaner, the tap like a vacuum can, putty adhesive. Cool. Yes. Smart lock safety syringe. The world's first heart transplant happened here. The yellow fever vaccine. And they have the biggest optical telescope in the southern hemisphere. And so on. What else? Fun fact. Being South African means knowing the difference between now, 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 and just now. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Jay. South Africa has also been the location shot of many feature films and TV shows. Everything from the debuting film The Gods Must Be Crazy, Academy Award winner Totsi, which I actually watched, Last night, amazing movie. Academy Award nominated District 9 and Chapter. And of course, nine. Mandela Long Walk to Freedom. What's your takeaway from South Africa cinema? There's some amazing comedy, which I feel like people don't talk about that much. I've been watching a lot of Leon Schuster movies. Yeah. No. And finally, one thing that unifies all South Africans is Heritage Day, in which people are encouraged to wear their traditional costumes and express their background. And everyone joins hey, and I like that. together, no matter who you we are. We should have Usually, the a festivals day like that. include an abundance of music. So to expound more on that, here's Keith. Blah, blah, blah. Wait, Keith isn't... How's he gonna be in this video? Yeah, let's go. He's here. Hannah, I'm in Florida, and guess what? You can't cancel me. Anyways, yeah. South Africa, Come on, Hannah. they have so much going on. Even their national anthem is sung in five different languages. 
basically from the beginning, traditional vocals were used along with the marimba, the yuhati, the kora, and other assorted hand drums and harps. The first style of music to really take over the world, probably Moravi. Now, Moravi started out in the slums of Johannesburg. And Moravi is a style of music that is basically underground swing jazz. From there, world-renowned artists such as Soweto Gospel Choir and Lady Smith Black Mombazo have put South Africa on the map. Every South African will definitely know Johnny Clegg, the white Zulu who wrote songs in Zulu to criticize apartheid. Today, South Africa is known predominantly for its popularity in house music, and more specifically for the subgenres of plum and I'm a piano. I'm I'm a piano. You guys told us to definitely mention those styles of music. Some other South African artists that you may be familiar with are Diane Wood for their crazy hip hop South African y fusion style of music. Guys might know Synth Peter, who I think has one of the greatest songs ever written. It's called Doof Doof. doof, doof. So it all goes jam to Doof Doof. Yeah. Yeah, that's doof, it for me. Doof. Hope you guys had a good one. And back to you all. Yeah. All right, so this is the part where we talk about some the of the man of the hour has spoken. So that figure is as talented as it is diverse. A few notable South Africans that you geography peeps might be familiar with include Charlie Theron, John Carney, Trevor Noah, Trevor and also Koji. No, the guy that I always watch and my fourth block in third term. There are a number of South Africans who have excelled in Man. different fields across current the events too. But just a few South Africans that you geography peeps might be familiar with. Thank you, Colo. All right, and with that, we got to move on to the next segment. Uh, this video is getting kind of long. Yeah, yeah it's longer than the Russia the video. That says something about friends zone. All right, so South Africa makes like two billion in his globe. Well, it really depends on where you want to start on the globe, but put him in that. As a member of the Commonwealth of Nations, of course, South Africa has always had many ties to their Anglophone counterparts. New Zealand and Australia are kind of like the Southern Hemisphere trio that dominate the Tropic of Capricorn. These three have been trading and assisting each other for centuries and have friendly competitions. There was a bit of tension in the past, though, since many white South Africans choose to move to these countries in fear of policies they think might target them in South Africa. It got to the point where an Australian cabinet member even referred to them as refugees, which caused some backlash. Yeah. But apart from that, overall, these three I could get see why. South Africa is also a member of the BRICS nation, oh, the man, Association of Emerging Economies, Bricks. Brazil, oh, Russia, no. India, China, and South Africa. Together, these five have about a quarter of the world's land and about 40% of the world's of population. They maintain a non they got India and China. That's so unfair, bro. As a we British need Dutch a BRICS version for us. Have with. Ties. Many South Africans visit or live I in these don't countries. Know, not that Interestingly, I though, is. despite a heavy usage of the Afrikaans language, South Africa has rejected all offers to join the Dutch language union and today what? stands in special partner status along with Indonesia. If you ask who South oh, Africa's man. best friends are, though, you probably have to head a little closer home. Today, despite being fully independent sovereign nations, South Africans usually don't even see Lesotho or Eswatini as separate countries. South Africa even has more Sotho and Swazi people than the entire population of the ah, it's like Same China. People China has more so they Mongols. The Mongolia has Mongols. Oh, okay, also I see. Group. They share a lot of the same ethnic groups like the Shona, Tsonga, and Khoisan. Granted, yes, there was a little bit of tension with Zimbabwe when they called for economic sanctions against South Africa during apartheid. And South Africa I swear, that Zimbabwe didn't Zimbabwe have an apartheid too when it was called like Rhodesia or something? Out almost their entire white population, but nonetheless, they have good relations. As for Namibia, they actually were a part of South Africa until gaining independence in 1990, so there's a significant historical tie. Today, a huge portion of Namibia's okay, so economy is tied Namibia, with South Africa. They even not Namibia. South African Rand as legal tender, uh, and overall, they just really like each other when they meet up. In conclusion, I think uh, you should take it away. Yeah, yeah. MVP. So South Africa, I feel, is super unique in the way that we connect with one another. The words that we use, the lingo, just everything is very different to anything I've ever experienced in, in another country. I feel like South Africa is just like Thimbos in the way that it's not seen anywhere else in the world. I like that. It's like Thimbos, nowhere else on Earth. And stay tuned. No, España, let's go. Let's go, bro, España. I'm so excited for that one. Ugh. I want to watch that now. And not have to wait for, like, a long time. But, guys, that is it for this video and this week's Geography Now. If you guys did enjoy this, like I said in the beginning of the video, like and subscribe. It really does appreciate it. It does help the, help the channel out. So, please, do me a favor. Subscribing. It would be my day.
Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you guys have a good day.